Hello and welcome back. Happy Thursday, everyone. Today we are going to be doing a rundown of Dev Diary 109, which details the Power Blocks mechanic, which is going to be introduced in the Spheres of Influence DLC on May 6th when it's released. Um, without further ado, let's jump into it. Hello and welcome to another Victoria 3 Dev Diary. Terrible, they're not wishing us a happy Thursday. I'm Lino, a game design lead on the project, and today I will take you through the, one of the big features of the Spheres of Influence exp uh, expansion, Power Blocks. As Martin wrote last week, Power blocks are multinational associations that are led by a great or major power. I don't think it was revealed last week that it would be a great or major power. It just said that they had to be big. Um, so this is a little bit of more news. Uh, they can take many shape, uh, many different shapes, some of which I will showcase today. The, the fact that we know that it can be a major power also introduced the idea that you can do it with an unrecognized country, although gaining recognition is very, very easy unless they make it harder in this thing. So uh, let's continue. With your skills uh, playing Victoria 3, or rather your skills picking Great Britain, the truth hurts, you too should be able to lead uh, in no time, I'm sure. Well, definitely in no time, because Great Britain starts out with a power block. Okay, but let's get into the details with some general aspects. General, uh, with power blocks, we are providing new and different opportunities for you to take control of one of these powerful empires and assemble your and customize your block, to shape its uh, effect of members to your liking, and guide its expansion and struggle with other power blocks dominating the region. A country can only be part of one power block at the same time. That does not mean the country is locked into the power block, though. There are ways for them to leave and join another block. If the conditions align, for, or even a uh, power block can be completely dismantled. Um, great powers uh, is will generally have an easier time leading a power block than major powers due to the higher budget of influence, which is generally uh, which is part of the upkeep cost for power blocks. Now, they say this, but major powers can declare a lot more rivals, generally speaking, um, which uh, is going to make it actually such that I think major powers will have uh, access or. I think that major powers generally have access to more influence because they can declare so many more rivals. Uh, but um, the thing is, is one of these things, they're going to talk about it later, is you're gated by prestige, and the person with the highest prestige can take over the block. So if you wanted to make a massive ma block as a major power, then you would still have to keep everyone's prestige lower than yours. Another thing is that... Um, it's uh, there's not really a way to lock yourself into being a major power, although this would in theory be ideal for generating as much influence as possible. Okay. Uh, additionally, there's cohesion penalty being applied to major powers leading power block even even further to reflect that they don't quite have the authority or the respect of others. Uh, the fact uh, and some other things we'll get onto later should uh, make a f uh, fight for top of prestige uh, leaderboards more rewarding and fun. Um, so. That, yeah, they're going to discuss it later, but this is uh, going to be... Currently, like, prestige just kind of just doesn't feel good. Uh, as, a, as a thing, you get a better company bonus, and this is kind of the extent of it, um, once you become great power. Okay. That's an oversimplification, but yeah. Um, it makes it easier to subjugate people if you inflate your prestige really high. There will be some power blocks established at game already, uh, e.g. Uh, Zulverin uh, and the British Empire, and the fact that, well... Are these the only two? Maybe. We see Congress system, so we're assuming there's maybe more at the start. Uh, you could start uh, You could start pl playing as Great Britain and you will already have a power block to go if that is your desire to do so. But playing as a regular member of any power block will feel differently than being outside of them. While there are good reasons you, why you may not want to join any power block, there are also potential effects and cooperation with other members for the... Uh, there are also potential powerful effects uh, and cooperation with other members of the same block. We see here uh, a bunch of blocks, it appears, and they are at game start. Okay, so uh, Russia's going to have a block, Turkey's going to have a block, and it looks like Austria is going to have a block that's going to include most of Italy. Interesting. Uh, I hear you managed to cut off uh, Austria's leash and you were able to unite Italy. Very impressive. Now you cr can't... Now you are ready to create your own power block. Let's look at that process which starts with customization. When you form your power block, you can customize a few aesthetic things to make it look pretty crazy or historic as possible. Whatever floats your boats. Boats. We have more than one. Uh, it starts off, uh, with the name, of course. I see you have uh, called it Venetian League. Excellent choice. <laughs> I love the RP element of this uh, <laughs> this read through. Uh, it continues with the emblem. We've added a number of options for you to choose from to decorate your crest. Please have elephants. We just want to call it something for the glory of Carthage. For the cutler selection, we have added uh, 
uh, support for traditional color uh, pickers so that you have the full freedom to express yourself via uh, pink, green, or Prussian uh, blue slash yellow. Uh, you could also see uh, there is a selection for a map pattern. The pattern will be displayed in the map modes that deal with power blocks with the, uh, and will be the same as your primary color if you, as, uh, as you may have seen from the historic uh, block screenshot. I hope to God that you can choose polka dots because I think that's so funny. Um, Japan is like my favorite flag when it comes to occupying countries because it just covers them in polka dots. So um, that'd be really exciting. But it looks like this is out of 10. It looks like you won't have a tremendous amount of options, which suggests uh, a distinct lack of, lack of elephants. But I'm sure people will be modding this like from day one and we'll have a bunch of like anime waifus and stuff or whatever. Because um, I think that's like one of the more like something... Britannica or whatever is like one of the more popular uh, uh, mods, but anyways, the one that like makes every flag like an anime waifu or something like that. Okay, in the next tab, you can find the statue customization window. Uh, here you can shape the looks of the fantastic monuments uh, which co uh, countries of your power block can build. Uh, so, monuments, it's gonna be interesting. Hey, we get elephants, perfect. Okay, there's a variety of pedestal statues and accessories to uh, choose to demonstrate your power block's might to the world. Countries in a power block will be able to build them and profit from their effects, which can be something like, and this is going to be key to read, something like influence, authority, or similar effects based on how you want to shape your power block. I wonder which is the most valuable. If influ Well, so I'm hoping that influence becomes a lot more valuable because it allows you to manage the block a lot better uh, and that it becomes much more useful to try and farm uh, influence in particular. Of course, the game rule for monuments effects will be expanded to include statues if you desire, uh, if you desire to disable their effects and just build them uh, based on their looks. Okay, fair enough. One of the majestic statues. Oh, we can't click on it? Well, we do see her. She's... Is that fire or water or flowers or... Okay, well, she's dancing with something coming out of her hands. Another addition uh, that will bring your power block uh, more into the 3D side of the world of new vehicles depending on the style of your block. This is not... Okay, this is something. Um, the, uh, the, the aesthetic stuff generally doesn't concern me too much, but we'll go through it. We can get that drip, apparently. You also find that uh, parts of clothing from the country leaders and the blocks will change. So, for example, you may see sabers, medals, or sausage being worn by them. Uh, which accessories are going to be worn is going to be the most important mechanic uh, that is going to be detailed through this entire deal. Oh, no, wait. I'm misreading it. It's going to be uh, uh, worn, and which vehicle will drive on your roads are going to be based on what the central identity pillar you pick for the power block. Uh, we will share more information on these assets in uh, one of our upcoming dev diaries dedicated to cosmetics. Stay tuned. We get to see that drip. E okay. And then there's the beep boop. Uh, it's not outside, though. So we're okay with it. Uh, speaking of the central identity pillars, let's have a look to see what might interest you for the Venetian League. Okay, central identity pillars. Power blocks revolve around a central set of values. These can range from bringing in as many subjects as possible into their glorious empire, looking at you, Great Britain and Russia, to a block where the leader's more interested in sp spreading their own religion throughout the world. That'll be interesting if you can force religions on other people. What does that mean by spreading religion? Okay. Identity pillars, currently you can't change religion. Identity pillars uh, change a few aspects of your power block. They provide a special ability to power block leaders, i.e. the trade league, identity making everyone part of a customs union under the leader or sovereign empire, uh, letting the leader turn a member into a subject of theirs under certain condition. Uh, so we are assuming it might be possible to diplomatically get people as a subject again. This used to be possible, um, and if this is the way it works, um, this is going to be very strong. Um, they define some rules for your power block, i.e. how co cohesion is gained. They unlock a group of principles, which we'll talk about next. They define the rate at which you get principles mandate. So they're going to unlock juice, and you, then you spend that juice to get other types of Jews, um, if that makes sense. Uh, so, Sovereign Empire, I think we're going to see the UK start as this uh, political union. Uh, I assume this is going to be about enforcing your political will. So, Sovereign Empire, good for getting subjects. Political union, if you can force people to open your borders with the new migration mechanics, maybe this is really good. Uh, cooperative military organization, I think is going to mainly be defensive um, type of thing. Uh, and then a trade, well, maybe offensive if you pull in the right people, but you'd have to pull in really big boys. Uh, and then trade league, uh, I think is just kind of like a customs union. 
uh, with extra bonuses. Um, which, you know, maybe is particularly attractive. I think we're going to try a one-state Panama run um, uh, with uh, Spheres of Influence to see if we can, being able to build in other people's countries, um, get a bunch of treaty ports, uh, build up a huge navy, this type of thing. I'm very curious to see if we can run an economy just on trade in a single state, in which case Trade League would be very powerful. Or a single state plus a bunch of uh, treaty ports. When forming and being able to build in other people's countries. So you could subjugate them, build in their country, own all this stuff, uh, and just ship it all back to Panama. When forming a power block, you'll have to pick one of these identities before moving on to the next step. Trade, uh, trade League, is it? Great choice. Okay. Uh, principles. Next up, you will have to choose your principles. So this is the core unchanging thing. Uh, these are the changing things, but they are gated by what type of this you choose. Yeah. WIP of selection of identities. We see that this box is also not done. They're just not showing stuff below it, so we can assume that maybe there's more. Well, I assume we can... Yeah, we could. you could always assume that maybe something's... Yeah, okay, never mind. That's, that's the opposite of assumption. Assumption is not paired with a maybe, generally. Okay, next up you will choose your starting principle. Uh, while identities provide a central idea uh, uh, and a sort of rule set for your power block, principles can provide a bit more practical expression. So these are where the bonuses come from. Uh, principles, or more so, I think. Uh, principles uh, come in groups of three levels, generally providing different effects uh, per level of all members of your block. Some are beneficial to everybody, while others are particularly favoring you, the great leader. Um, and so uh, I assume, uh, based on some stuff they say uh, later, the stuff that's beneficial for everyone makes it easier to pull more people in, uh, whereas like the stuff that's just good for you is going to make it harder to pull more pe people in, something like this. Uh, the effects from principles of higher tiers uh, are added are always added to lower ones. So if you have a tier 3 principle of defensive cooperation unlocked, you get the effects of tier 1 and tier 2. Uh, here's a work in progress uh, selection on here. Okay. And we see uh, little ideas of multiple levels of defensive cooperation. Uh, at level one, uh, you cannot uh, start wars amongst power block members. Uh, and, okay. Uh, for level two, uh, it's minus maneuver cost uh, for the Diplo play target uh, uh, to sway people to your side, I think. Uh, uh, and so it's easier to pull in a bunch of block members. And for three, all... Uh, uh, all power block members are, yes, obligated to join uh, plays on power block members' side. And so this seems bad um, for the leader of the play because they have to join um, the, the thing. But this also probably makes it easier to pull people in. They have to join if someone in the block gets decked on assuming that only the leader is going to have defensive cooperation level three uh but in return you maybe it's easier to get people into your block for other reasons like trade and so we're assuming that this is this is maybe prussia we're kind of looking at here but they said something about this being the trade thing so i don't know um uh maybe everyone is going to have defensive cooperation on some level Okay, identities have, in, in which case, uh, if this, if you have to join everyone's wars, really hope we're going to be able to see multiple wars, which we haven't seen anything announced about that, uh, other than a dev saying they were trying to make it work, uh, but, uh, for, for the spheres thing, but it's like, uh, it's mechanically difficult to execute having multiple wars. Uh, and, and I think it's a large function of the way the fronts work rather than having units moving through individual states in terms of the military, which is why we haven't seen it. Because that's like a feature that I, I don't think is contentious that everyone would like prefer to have. It's being able to declare, uh, be, being able to be in multiple wars simultaneously. Okay. Identities have one or more principal, uh, primary principal groups, which indicate a deeper connection to the identity than most of the other principal groups. Identities have one or more prin primary principle groups, which indicate a deeper connection to the identity than most of the other principle groups. We're starting to use a lot of words that uh, we are not abundantly familiar with the meaning, but okay. Uh, you will be required to choose identities, the big overarching thing. They will have one or more one or more principle groups, which indicate, okay, so we're going to have unique principle groups, one or more, that are unique to the identity. Okay. You'll be required to choose one of the primary ones to form the Venetian League. Every additional principle you pick at a later stage will grant you a bonus to your power block's cohesion, which can be impactful. You can exchange it later on if you like, but you may have a very hard time doing so, because your block won't like it. Block party. By having uh, 
countries remain in your block, you will unlock uh, potential to, uh, to upgrade existing principles or uh, pick new ones with entirely different effects. Each member of your power block contributes a number of points towards principal mandate. The higher the rank, the higher the contribution. Um, and so now we have this idea of principal mandate, which you are going to be using as a resource. Um, okay, so we get a bunch of guys in, we get a bunch of mandate, and then we can uh, do stuff with the mandate. Uh, each mandate allows you to either pick a new tier one principal if you have an open slot, or upgrade one of your established principles by one tier, or switch uh, a principal of any tier to a different principal. And so if we have available mandates, we can add in stuff, market unification, advanced research, etc. Um, we see Sovereign Empire, which is going to give power block modifiers, uh, resolution progress, resolution progress, uh, and can subjugate power block member. Um, and then leader modifiers minus weekly liberty desire, which is going to be good and useful for you. Okay. With the fancy customized look, the central identity pillar and the first uh, principle picked, it's finally time to form the Venetian League. Now all that's left is to send the invitations. Everyone will join. It'll be a block party. Uh, if at least one of the countries accepts, uh, your very own power block is officially formed. Congratulations. But how do you get other countries like uh, like the miners in the Austrian power block to join your block and ensure they're staying there so you can get more principle mandate, so you can get more um, juice? Okay. Uh, leverage. That's what leverage is for. Raising your leverage to overtake Austria might be a challenge, but it might be also worth it since you're weakening their block at the same time as strengthening your own. There's a couple of factors that contribute to power block building up leverage on a country, such as at least one of the power blocks members having an interest in the country, a hard requirement for gaining leverage, so you have to be able to deck that interest, making navies more useful. Um, Positive relations and certain other uh, pacts like alliances or trade agreements. Trade agreements are already really strong. Alliances are freaking useless uh, currently, but we're hoping Spheres changes that. And to be fair, um, if if it's really going to give you a ton of leverage for having an alliance particularly, and you really want someone in your group, then maybe it makes sense. Uh, siding with the target in Diplo plays, this will be, uh, this is all, it's already very useful to side with people, so I'm guessing you're going to want to thumb a lot of pies. Lobbies for or against your country, we'll hear more about lobbies at a different dev diary. Um, and economic dependence, which we'll cover more in detail in a future dev diary, but which includes trade routes between the countries. So volume of trade, which has always been a kind of mainstay of doing Diplo stuff, uh, we're expecting to see that be a bit of a thing. Uh, by default, uh, leverage will trend towards zero, so that means if you want to keep the leverage on a country, uh, say Switzerland, uh, active or even increase it, you will need to engage with them in one form or another. Nice little radiating thing. Uh, keep in mind that conducting diplomacy is harder for you now that you are power, part of a power block. Countries and other power blocks will feel intimidated and are going to be less likely to agree to your proposal, proposals. A sag. That would have been a good reason for you to stay neutral. Oh well, too late now. Yeah, it do be like that sometimes. There's actually two values for leverage. Uh, one that it continuously builds up over time if you meet the requirements, and another one which is called active leverage. That is the result of your leverage minus the, the high, next highest block's leverage. Result of all your leverage minus the next highest block's leverage. So I guess this is going to be uh, effectively, like, w whatever is in the surplus is effectively, like, how much uh, agency you have over the country. So, for example, if you have 200 leverage in Switzerland and the Austrian bloc has 80 leverage on them, your active leverage is only 20 uh, because you have to overcome the Austrian bloc's leverage. Okay. If you manage to get enough active leverage, you can invite Switzerland to your bloc. The active leverage uh, your bloc has on them determines the likelihood of joining your bloc if you ask them nicely. What if you ask them meanly? Their good friends uh, came uh, gladly after all, but what if they decline? Well, you can apply a slightly firmer grip if they need uh, if they need it and threaten war with them to force them into your bloc. There we go. Pog. Uh, this will uh, cause a certain amount of infamy, though, depending on how much active leverage you have on them. This will be interesting if there's more kind of uses for infamy, especially because active expansion is not as important, right? Um, if you can force someone into your customs union, and then you now have the strategy of building buildings in their country, spending your infamy to expand your power block rather than annexing countries might make sense because you can just build in them rather than needing to uh, expand and annex a bunch of territories always and forever in order to get resources. And so this could maybe give, um, if you're trying to play tall, for example, and you're not trying to annex a lot, and I think playing tall will become a lot more viable, 
then you can do stuff like this um, and and try and spend your infamy in this way. Because if you're not using your infamy decay, if you're not using it, you're losing it. Okay. Even after integrating Switzerland to your block, leverage needs to be kept up. Otherwise, it opens the door to another power block doing the same as you have done and convincing them to leave your block and join them. It's sad. Big sad. It looks like you have learned how to keep uh, how to get more countries in your block. It is prospering and growing, it seems. But I feel that you have forgotten something uh, you had uh, better keep in mind. Classic us, forgetting about the mechanics of uh, expansion that is yet to be revealed or we have yet to read about, except I already read through this. But still. Okay. Cohesion is the measurement of how well countries in your power block fit together. More than anything else, it looks at the identity to determine the target value towards which uh, value towards which it will value it will then trend towards. I don't like how that sentence is worded. Like my brain read it, and then I guess it's maybe not that pr problematic. Identity determines the target which it will then trend towards. Okay. Like my brain understood the meaning, but then couldn't. F articulate the sentence i just okay we don't need to there are some things in the game that can generate or drain cohesion an important thing by the way is that a lot of things in victoria 3 and this doesn't get talked about very much uh, or at least i don't talk about it very much uh, even though i think it's a big thing um a lot of things in victoria 3 operate at equilibriums and what will end up happening is like you will change something in your country and it won't feel like it does anything but it doesn't do anything uh now it instead slowly begins to do something over the course of 10 years let's say uh like increasing literacy or adding schools it doesn't instantly increase literacy right it increases the equilibrium towards which literacy trends or um workforce ratio and so it's like it can be hard to appreciate how good um, something that changes equilibriums are, but I also think that they they make for a good simulation. So here we are. There are some other things in the game that can generate or drain cohesion, though. The e.g. principles providing a benefit or reducing it, uh, actions that leaders or members can take, events. And so principles, we come back, so a principle that is maybe good for the members and not really good for you, maybe is useful for the purpose of maintaining cohesion. Uh, similar to legitimacy, cohesion value will be one of five brackets each having a different effect on your power block they are more so likely to gain uh they are more likely to, around the gain of leverage on members of your block but can halt the progress of principal mandate generation they are mostly around the gain of leverage so um if you have more cohesion it's easier to gain leverage okay uh, now, the main problem you're facing is that leverage gain on the members of your power block is affected by cohesion, uh, which makes it harder to keep them around. And so um, you lose a bunch of cohesion, it gets harder to keep everyone around, everyone scatters for other power blocks. Most countries that uh, you add to your block will reduce your cohesion. So this means you have to be selective. The more countries you have, the higher the speed of unlocking the next principal mandate. Ah, tension. As Whenever there's two antagonistic mechanics, this leads to generally leads to uh, more interesting gameplay. Uh, but the more difficult it will also be to keep control over your members' countries, potentially leading them uh, to being pulled into a competing power block. Kicking less powerful member might be worth it in order to restore balance. Nice. Similarly, helping, uh, similarly helpful could be picking up a more generous principle as your next one, which is kind of something we've discussed a little bit, that principles that are helping out the, the other subject members might be more useful. When you've found a way to stabilize your block to comfortable levels, you should look for the goal to the next target. Uh, you should look for the next potential target to acquire. Okay. Finding a balance between how many countries you can support and keep under your reign and where you uh, invest your diplomatic resources is going to be a key t uh, if you are leading a power block. Keeping in mind that it is going to spend, you are going to spend Diplo, um, you know, to keep everything going. I wonder if playing as a major power is going to be really good for this. I know that they said it was bad, but you can just pull in a bunch of other majors. You just have to make sure you're the biggest. I don't know. Uh, maybe you should stick to uh, uh, to Bavaria and Be Denmark as your con uh, next targets. On the other hand, the contributions of great power like France uh, would bring would maybe worth it. I, it's going to be interesting to see how easy it is to pull a block leader into your block, but okay. Um, or maybe France doesn't start with a block. So you've managed to get France to join your Venetian League. Ugh. Congratulations. I'd like to point your attention towards France's prestige. Since it's a more than 20% higher than yours... They have automatically initiated a power struggle. If they succeed in keeping that score up for a full year, they will assume leadership of the Venetian League. Awkward. Demoting you to a regular member. Uber awkward. France might even want to uh, rename your power block after ways. Mon Dieu. 
Uh, let's hope Power Blocks will uh, find a better end under your leadership once Spheres of Influence uh, releases in May. Um, when that happens, May 6th, it releases on May 6th, everyone. This is the thing that, you, it, as a developer, you should be like, May 6th, what's the day? May 6th, also May 6th. And when it comes to the date it's released, May 6th. Okay, when it, <laughs> that's how you promote. May 6th. Okay. When that happens, note that there's going to be a core conversion of Power Blocks uh, that is going to launch with a free update for players, even if you didn't uh, purchase Spheres of Influence. This is something that is a little bit... Well, okay. The free version allows you to pick the Trade League identity, making it possible to recreate shared market whose functionality we've moved from the Diplo Pact onto the Power Block feature. So... No more customs unions without power blocks. It also replicates the sphering mechanics from Victoria 2 in a more natural way than subjugation or negotiating for customs unions or packs. Though, of course, uh, uh, power blocks will, can take this even further with more mechanics at depth. Part of the expansion for power blocks is customization and the vast majority of advanced mechanics like uh, the other central identity pillars, principles, and statues. That's all for today. I'm going to tell you more about changes to building ownership and what that uh, enables you to do for an investment uh, and then etc. Now, um, this is something that uh, I don't know if this is... So, uh, in, in... How should I say this? With the Voice of the People release, specifically a lot of people were upset uh, because they prepaid for Voice of the People and then they made uh, with like the Grand Expansion, which I think the Grand Expansion also includes um, Sears or I, I forget, um, but um, they were upset because Voice of the People was very feature light in the DLC itself and most of the features were in the free patch and they expressed at the time a new philosophy where they wanted to have most of the stuff be part of the free patch because um, this would make it easier to keep the game accessible um, to newer players entering like years and years down the road and so you wouldn't have a Europa Universalis that's effectively impossible to, to enter. I don't know to what extent having all these central pillars will be essential. I assume it's not. But if it starts to feel like you absolutely need the DLC in order to play the game, that will be disappointing uh, because part of the good faith, I think, that Voice of the People was released in was this idea that, hey, we're trying to keep the game accessible um, and uh, to people who buy the game and we don't want a central mechanic to be left out now to be fair i think that this is i think that they achieved this with the trade thing but if there's functionally like a ton of things you can't do as a result of this and it feels like you need the dlc now then that to me means that what voice of the people should have been more feature dense um than it was uh because i think you're either in on this philosophy that uh the free version uh needs to have the most uh needs to have a certain amount of features or you're not we'll see how that goes i mean this part i think is uh is is sufficient but i don't really know and this is just something i've been thinking about when it comes to people often ask is the dlc worth it and usually my response is like okay paradox games uh in terms of the cost per hour are incredibly good generally speaking I, and when someone complains, someone has a thousand hours and they complain that the game is expensive because the DLCs, it's like, come on, it's like, you know, entertainment is generally more expensive than that. Um, but uh, we will see um, exactly how that is. I hope that it. I hope that they don't release it so that it feels like you need the DLC to play the game. I guess is kind of the TLDR, and maybe I'm rambling a little bit. But for me, um, the fact that you're not going to be getting um, I mean, you can't get everything in the, uh, the free patch is also the thing. So, like, the, it's this weird sort of tension where you just, you have to have the game not be broken. And I think that this will do that, uh, but I also am mildly concerned, I suppose. Well, I, I mean, I personally will get the DLC no matter what, but, okay. Uh, that's all for today. Next week, I'm going to tell you more about the changes to building ownership. This is the most exciting thing for me. So super excited for next Thursday. That's next Thursday, the 28th, because we always save dates. That's Thursday, uh, the 28th. And the game, the DLC, releases on May 6th. Um, uh, but that's all for an investment.
big dice. Okay, and then here's an overview uh, for the dev diaries. That's the 28th of March is going to be the next one. Then 4th of April, subject interactions. This one is the least exciting to me, but maybe there's some spicy stuff in there. Um, at the 11th of April, lobbies and more on power blocks. Uh, then the 18th, great game. And then uh, the art of the spheres of influence on the 25th. We might take a break on that one. Well, we'll probably go over it, but like art is art. Uh, and then on May 2nd, that's four days before the release of Spheres of Influence on May 6th, uh, will be the change log of 1.7. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, and uh, have a good day.